Yes, sir. Thank you. Salam Wari, Bifatul Kibam, our creator of the universe. But Zayim was the Makulu, gave some praises unto our ancestors. And in our Pan African tradition, we developed the practice of requesting permission from an elder to speak before continuing. So I'm going to do that right now. Can I have permission from an elder in the room to continue before I continue? Yes. Give that. That's about five elders. So give that. <laughs> give that. All right, kings and queens. As said, I'm going to be speaking on this subject towards African liberation, revolutionary culture, and economics in practice. Ratings. Sorry. Apologies for the spelling mistake here. Ratings to whoever um, sorted out the program uh, because you put me after the right people, them. Because I'm really just going to pick up from where they left off, yeah? Um, I, I envisage myself, uh, un, uh, rather characteristically, having a longer period of time to speak. And so um, I have 15 minutes or so. My presentation is going to be uh, rather truncated. So you're going to have to stay with me, yeah? Um, I'm going to move very quickly through a whole bit of information. Is that all right? Yes. Everybody all right? Yes. You with me? Yes. We're going to be fast, okay? All right. Let me make sure this is working. All right, good. Okay, so um, I'm going to start here. My dear, with this, called, this, this topic called liberation, yeah? Pan-Africanism is about forwarding a liberation agenda for African people. And it's very important that we put this in our minds because at the moment, we are distracted from this concept of liberation. Uh, but we're going to define liberation for the sake of this uh, presentation as... By liberation we mean the acquisition of the power to be the masters of our own destiny. This means to have control over every aspect of our lives. With the capacity to define, defend, and develop ourselves without determining our own destiny. Everybody understand that? Yes. All right? Now, today, kings and queens, we are caught up on euphemisms for liberation, yeah? We will remember, for example, that everybody's had this before, the liberation of, sorry, the independence of Ghana is meaningless. Unless it is linked up with the total to what? Liberation. liberation of the African continent. Who said that? Kwame Nkrumah at the independent celebration of Ghana. Is that what he said? Yes? In 1957. Uh, uh, Patrice Lumumba said something similar in terms of making the independence of Congo a beacon light for the liberation of the entire African continent. So these people are juxtaposing the idea of independence with liberation. In other words, independence was just a phase, a stage in the process of liberation. They understood that there was much more work to be done. You understand what I'm saying? Okay, we got caught up on the, on the independence vibe and what it meant to be independent, yeah? And so as a result of that, Kings and Queens, the, 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 the concepts that are dominating us at the moment are things like this, democracy, yes? Development and globalisation. Yeah. <laughs> These are the concepts, yeah, that are dominating when you watch, when you watch at any election on the African continent or in the Caribbean, yeah? The buzz terminologies are democracy, development and globalisation. You ain't heard liberation yet. You following me? But the difference is, is that liberation is an agenda defined by African people for African people. Democracy development and globalization are the imposition or the result of us reacting to neo-colonial development. Is everybody with me? Yes. Democracy being political, development being economic, and globalization being cultural. Yes? To explain this one, globalization is them globalizing their culture and organizing the world around that definition. Is everybody with me? Mm -hmm. All right? So we're going to move forward. These are euphemisms, kings and queens, yeah? To trivialize, neutralize, and pacify and divert us from our quest for total liberation. Okay? So um, I want to play this for time, but after the second time, I'm going to move on. All right? It was a little thing just to get people in the vibration, but we're going to move on from that. All right? So getting into the, the, the substance of the thing. What is culture? For this definition, we're going to go to this great book by the name of Yoruba, uh, an African-centered critique of European cultural thought and behavior. By the way, kings and queens, I'm not, um, you know, it's not lost on me that I'm in a university, and a university is one, probably one of the last places they're going to hear the name Mama Marumba Annie. <laughs> yeah? Which is very, very strange. All right? But we're going to go forward anyway. Um, she begins by quoting Wade Nobles. Wade Nobles defines culture as the process um, which gives people a general design for living, and patterns for interpreting reality. Its aspects, he says, are ideology, ethos, and worldview. Its factors are ontology, how one defines, or how people define themselves and the nature of being. Uh, cosmology, how we define the universe and our relationship to the universe. And axiology, the, 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 the essential principles and values, yes, of a people's ideology or culture. Um, and its manifestations consist of behavior, values, and attitudes, yeah? Why are we defining culture? We're gonna come to that question in a second. Um, this is just gives some uh, explanations as to all the things that culture does in terms of organizing people's behavior, organizing their thought patterns, um, uh, politicizing them, yes? 
giving them a sense of identity and a sense of who their enemies are. I'm going to go to the end because she said, for all of the above reasons, it impacts on the definition of group's interests and is, she says, potentially political. I am humbly going to revise the use of the word potential and say always. <laughs> culture is always <laughs> political. Yeah, there, are, there is no such thing as an apolitical culture. Okay? If you understand what culture is or what politics is. All right? So, we see culture as made up of two different uh, facets. This is given to me by my father. By the way, I'm a member of the Archibald and Babylonist movement. And this is how we are taught as children in the Archibald and Babylonist movement. That culture is based upon cultural values and expressed in cultural media. This provides us with what is called social order and is institutionalized for a communal value system. Is everybody with me? Yeah, so you've got cultural values, essential principles of your culture, and these values are expressed through the cultural mediums. Yes? Okay, um, we have Martin Martin Francis Quest Wilson here who gives us nine areas of people activity. All of these are products of culture. Your culture informs all of these nine areas of people's activity, and institutions are developed around these areas of people activity. In turn, these nine areas of people activity therefore reinforce the values of the culture, evolve the culture. You following me? Yeah, okay. What happens, kings and queens, yeah, is that, as my remember, Ali says, anthropologists, through their use and abuse of the cultural concept, have generally ignored the political implications of culture by de emphasizing its ideological function. Yes? Through this conventional use of the cultural concept, these societies have been theoretically and superficially abstracted from political context in which they exist. How does that happen? Yeah, you know, so we, we, dealt, we dealt with this, with this already. What happens? especially in the instance of African culture, is that we remove the values yeah, from it. Yeah, thereby removing the social order and we emphasize the cultural mediums. Yeah? So African culture begin, be, begins with just about this. Yes? It doesn't inform politics and economics, philosophy, science. It's just about sun, dance, food. food. I don't know if it's beautiful. But to minimize culture to that, and we do that even in conscious Pan African circles. You ever been to a meeting where they say, right, you, you've, had, you've had a good speech, now we're going to get to the cultural element of the program. Yeah. And then we're going to performance. Yeah. You following me? All the intellectual stuff lies outside of culture. Art is cultural. Does that believe me? Right? So we're going to move on now and focus on one aspect of culture, one expression of culture, which is language. And we're going to show how culture is political and how that political nature of culture relates to economic development. Is everybody with me? You're following me? Are you sure? Yes. Yes. I'm not a European, I'm African, so I expect responses. Yes. <laughs> Are you with me? Yes. yes. All right. Definition this is a brilliant man. Crazy Pra. A man by the name of Crazy Pra. Yeah? Defining. Or in explaining the importance of language in a culture. If culture is the main determinant uh, of our attitudes, tastes, and mores, language is the central feature of culture. It is in language that culture is transmitted, yeah? interpreted, and configured. Language is also a register of culture. Historically, the trajectory of a culture can be read in the language and the evolution of its lexical morphology. I'll come back to that part. There's plenty of big words in that last sentence. But let's explain this further. Does anybody speak uh, a language of the African continent in here? Raise your hand. Right. Put your hand down. Um, if you're trying to translate something in your language, yeah, to English or to explain to someone who only speaks English, how often do you come across the idea that you can't really properly translate it? Yeah, all the time. Yeah, all the time. Yeah. It's very frequent, right? Why? Because there are ideas, concepts in the language that do not exist in this culture. Yes. There are no words for it in this culture. Right. You following me? All right. <laughs> what was that? Like prison. Like prison. <laughs> yeah. Like orphan. Yeah. For example. Yes. Yeah. There are all these things. This last sentence: historically, the trajectory of a culture can be read in the language and evolution of its lexical, lexical and morphology. What that means is. As a culture develops, it develops a language that is congruent with its own development. So for example, use a basic example, before there was a microchip, there was no word microchip. The English people that speak English developed words or new, what they call neologisms, yeah, in the English language, that follow the development of the culture itself. So you develop new words depending on the new phenomena, the new creations of the culture. Is everybody with me? All right. Just to explain this further, yeah, 
this great book, how do you how to develop Africa? The Portuguese and the Spanish had always shown contempt for African language and religion. Schools of kindergarten and primary level Af um, for Africans in Portuguese colonies were nothing but agencies for the spread of the Portuguese language. In the little Spanish, no, sorry, Spanish colony, colony of Guinea, the small amount of education given to Africans was based on eliminating the use of languages by pupils and on instilling in their hearts the holy fear of God. What that means is instilling European culture. There is, what this was done for is for the sake of creating a, 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 a civil society class, yeah, that was basically under the governance, yes, um, in uh, colonial Africa, yes, and also imparting just enough knowledge that they could basically, people in, on, on our continent and in the Caribbean could basically develop cash crops for European economies, yes. Um, this is a great book by, by a man by the name of Sheikh Anthony Diop. Very underrated and underappreciated book, especially in terms of charting a course for African, uh, Pan African development. Yeah? But he says the influence of language is so great that various European mother countries feel they can afford to withdraw politically from Africa without great loss as long as their linguistic presence remains in the economic, spiritual, and cultural spheres. In Africa today, and Africans in the Caribbean today, we divide ourselves based upon the colonial language that we speak. French-speaking Africa, Anglophone Africa, French-speaking Caribbean, Anglophone Caribbean. Allow me a tell? Me say, allow me a tell. Okay. All right. That brings us to the subject of economy. So we've seen how their language facilitated they're turning our nations into economic bastions for their wealth. You following me? Yes. All right. What is economy? How long do I have left? Please. Ten minutes. Good. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> economy: the state of a country or region in terms of the production and, co and consumption of goods and services and the supply of money. Careful management of available resources. Why am I going into this? Because whenever we get into discussions about economics, yeah, especially um, well, as a people, we begin by talking about money, and if we think we're conscious, we talk about business. <laughs> yeah? We need more black business. Yeah? And when we talk about, we say, we need a black economy, we talk about we need more black business. There are things that, are cons that we need to consider if we're talking about economy, before we talk about money and business. So for that, I told you, you know, I'm, I'm picking up where you left off, you know. I'm picking up where you left off. I'm picking up where you left off. You know what I mean? Yeah? If you ain't read this book, it's 800 and something pages. I've read it. You're for reading. Yeah? All right? An economic system, like any other social system, is fundamentally founded on the dynamically organized and systematic social relations of exchange within a community of persons and between communities of persons. An economic system does not come to ex into existence because of the mere presence of the, within the group or between groups of individuals or classes of individuals who possess or control commodities, items of use, value, money and various services. In order for an economic system to evolve within a group, members of that group must choose to enter into ongoing, organised social relations of exchange with each other based on a complementary and mutual, uh, mutuality of interests, purposes, values, tastes, means of production, and functional level of trust and fidelity. Yes? Does everybody, does everybody follow that? Yeah. But I don't have time to break it down. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All right? But it's very... The, the essential point is that we understand that our economies as a people are fundamentally based on our relationships with each other. You understand me? Mm -hmm. All right. Now kings and queens. He goes on to break down some work here from a white boy by the name of Joel Cockin, yeah? In a book called Tribes, How Race, Religion, and Identity Determine Success um, in the New Global Economy. And this is just a, a, a three factors that he says have contributed to people being able to develop global economies, yeah? Strong economies, all right? He says, firstly, a, a strong identity. Secondly, a global network. And thirdly, technical knowledge. Now, what I want you to identify is, technically speaking, we are a global people. We have the wherewithal to create a global network if we want to. What's missing, yeah, is this. First, the strong identity, 
collectively. And secondly, this technical knowledge business, if you look at all of the revolutionary leaders that we had, they invested heavily in the technical knowledge of their people. What they say around the biggest problems in our Africa right about now? Brain drain. And how is that brain drain be, vacuum being filled? By the Chinese. We'll come and build your role. But it's not contributing to the intellectual technological development of the people of the nation. You following me? All right? OK. You could say more in that. Economic system kicks in free. So social relations, human, uh, a people who have control over these factors can build whatever kind of economy they want to build. Because they say we live in a capitalist economy. Whatever economy that you want to build, once you control your social relationships, your human resources, that means your labor and your intellect. Yes? Your means of production. Yes? And your material resources, land, which is the fundamental material resource, you can build any economic system you want to build. And all of this is defined and informed by your culture. Two minutes, all right. I'm nearly there. So kings and queens, is everybody, is everybody familiar with this concept? Yeah, yeah I'm putting it forward, you, you talked about my art. Yeah, this is Ubuntu, yes, which is a, 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 an ideology of social relation, yeah? Now, people say, Africa's so diverse. Such diverse cultures on the continent. You can't put a unified African identity. <laughs> yes? I have not, and somebody can inform me, I have not come across an indigenous African culture in which people, centeredness, and communal value system is not central to that. <laughs> I have no controversy. If you have, let me know. I will. I would love to know. All right. Ubuntu, yeah. Um, in the Zulu, Ubuntu, Ongumuntu, Ogabantu. Yeah. A person is a person because there are people. Or in other words, I am because we are, and since we are, therefore I am. Yeah. We have this concept called Ujama. Yes, which is Kiswahili, a familyhood, property, economics, uh, and community. To, 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 to wrap up, I'm going to give you a couple of examples of how you can put this into practice. The first one is a cooperative of the UNIA ACO, the Universal Negro Improvement Association and African Communities League. Now, I know there are some serious left-wing people in here that believe that Marcus Garvin was a capitalist. Um, I don't have time to debate that right now. Ask me the question and answer. I'm ready for you. All right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, but the point is that these were, they built a number of economic endeavors here that were based upon collective wealth. That meant that the people yeah? At least six million people around the world were able to invest and collectively own various institutions that were put to the services of the African people of the world. Everybody with me? All right. Um, uh, this Ujama model, yeah? By uh, the people of Tanzania as led by Mwalimu Julius Nyerere. Don't have time to go into all of it. One of the things that I do want to highlight, though, is that um, the, the uh, Kiswahili, was made the official language of Tanzania under Nyerere. And they were able to produce educational materials um, in Kiswahili for the people there. So the people that were learning in their own language. As a result of that, literacy rates rose, shot through the roof. Why? Because the foreign language was no longer the basis for academic achievement. Yeah? Um, the other thing is that they were able to develop this thing called Ujama villages, which basically housed um, 250 families approximately across the thousands of villages, and they were self-sufficient communities. Yeah, but they built their own houses, they, they they built their own clinics, they built their own schools. Yeah, poverty rates shut down because they're self-sufficient. They also were responsible for farming for themselves and their family, and also collectively the entire Ujama village. I'm not saying that any of these models were absolutely perfect. They all have things that we have to update, but we often speak about Pan-Africanism in terms of how white supremacy destroyed it. We have some successes that if we know what they were, there are roadside for us to build from where we are at right about now, kings and queens. Yeah? Right. Um, Kwezi Bra, love, I, yeah, I'm going to stop right now. Yeah? Love um, this particular thing that he's doing, but it's a, it's a project whereby he's using African languages and bringing them together for the sake of unifying yeah, people that perceive ourselves as divisive, div divided, and separate distinct peoples, thereby creating economies of scale and languages that we can use to teach our people science and technology and them kind of things there. Right? I'm going to stop there because I'm over time. <laughs>